We are now on record. The time is 9.52 a.m. Today's date is October 25th, 2021. This is the beginning of the deposition of Eric Rick Milglands in the case caption uh, Ayakwe versus Federal Express Corporation. Will counsel introduce yourself and state whom you represent, please? My name is Daniel French, and I represent Federal Express Corporation. My name is McDavid Ogekwe. I represent myself as pro se. And will the court reporter now please swear in the witness? Yes, Mr. Miglins, will you please raise your right hand? You solemnly swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. You may proceed. I can go. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Wilkins. How are you doing? Good morning. How are you doing? Good. Okay. Can you please state your take when you first started with the Federal Express Corporation? First started with FedEx in 1989, March 20th. Any night? Yes. All right, thank you. At what position? Handler. Matisha handler or just handler, handler at the time? Okay. Was it a at a airport location or where Was else? at a station. At a what? A station. Can you elaborate what type of station? DGO station. DGO station. Was it anything like DFW airports? In terms, was there any ramp activity there? No. There's no ramp activity there? No. Okay, thank you. Also, have you ever operated a top loader? No. Never. Can you confirm that again? You've never operated a no. top side loader? Have you ever trained anybody to operate a top side loader? No. Have you ever instructed somebody to operate a top side loader? No. Have you ever instructed anybody, including an employee, a subordinate, to operate it faster? I don't understand the question. Have you ever used your watch or your cell phone, instructed an employee to go faster on a top side loader while they're in operation on a gate at DFW Airport? I've given them pointers on how to operate and what the guidelines were, but I've not told them to go faster in any unsafe manner. Not in the middle of the actual operation? No. When did you do that? I just told you I didn't do that. But you said you just given the instruction and pointers. I've given instruction to employees. To employees? Yes. Both employees. Okay. Thank you. Also, if you can elaborate as the senior manager of DFW Airport, what are your primary responsibilities? My primary responsibilities are the safe operation of the airport facility to ensure that employees are taken care of as far as safety, payroll, policy, uh, guidelines, safety guidelines, along with numerous other operational uh, reports, um, planning, budgeting. Okay. In terms of the safety record, would you say that the safety record at DFW Airport is on par with FedEx standards or one of the top performances in the last 24 months? I would say it's it's average for a FedEx operation. Mm -hmm. Average? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, I'm gonna interrupt just for a minute. If both of y'all, instead of mm-hmm and uh-uh, if y'all could just say yes or no clearly, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. If you don't mind, Mr. Wilkins, is there a level of, uh, I guess, are there levels to level priorities in terms of safety violations, saying a drop can versus a aircraft strike? Is there any one that's more serious than the other? I would consider both serious. Okay. That's not my question, sir. An aircraft strike, such as equipment hitting something 
in the equipment where an aircraft actually being struck by another object or an empty can falling off on the side of the ramp or loaded, loaded or empty, is there a level of significance between Ob the two? Objective form, you can answer the question. I would say both are serious safety issues and each can result in significant safety risk. Okay. And I don't think one's more important than the other. They're both important. Mm -hmm. Okay. In terms of those two violations, not, they carry the same way you're saying, correct? Objective form, you can answer the question. This states his testimony, you can answer the question. Could you repeat the question? So there's no difference in the level of seriousness or severe, uh, severeness of dropping an empty can and striking an aircraft, you're saying? Both res can result in significant risk to employees and other equipment, okay. and I don't think one's lesser than the other. Okay, have you witnessed me harm any coworker or myself on the ramp? No, I have not. Have you ever witnessed any other employees harm themselves or others on the ramp? DFW, in the okay. last 24 months. Go ahead. Are you talking in person or through review of video? Are you talking about reported incidents? Absolutely, all of that. Okay. As you are the senior manager at DFW Airport, and you previously stated you, you're in charge of safety, the reports, et cetera, et cetera, I would assume you do so. Okay, I'm gonna object to form. You can answer if you know. There have been incidences mm -hmm. in the last 24 months, specific on each of them, I don't know it off the top of my head. Okay, I'd like to review some with you. Is that okay? It's your deposition, sir. Thank you. Gate seven, would you consider that the most dangerous gate at DFW Airport for operations under your command? No, I do not. You do not? Okay. Which do you consider the most dangerous gate at DFW? I think all gates pose a significant risk for people that are working in them. Okay. So the number of accidents you've, uh, that have occurred under your leadership at DFW, there's no specific gates that, have, that had the highest number of accidents? I can tell you far as I know, it isn't gate seven, that there have been more accidents at other gates than gate seven. Yeah, but we're talking one gate specifically, not all those gates compared to one gate. If there had to be one gate that you would say is a critical point that has, you know, a, a little bit too many compared to the others, one by one, gate seven isn't a part of it, correct, you're saying? I do not recall specific incident at okay. gate seven. Do you know a former package hand, uh, material handler by the name of Jorge Prado? He was Argentini. I don't recall the name. Do you recall him falling off a ladder and busting his head open on gate seven? Now I understand who you're talking about. I know him as George. Okay, you know him as George? Yes, and I don't recall if it was at gate seven. You don't recall if it was gate seven? I don't remember that it was. You don't, okay. Do you recall a Victoria Banks? Yes. Do you recall her getting injured? Yes. Do you remember what gate that was at? It was on the deck by gate seven. Okay, so you do remember that was at gate seven, correct? It wasn't at gate seven, it was on the deck by gate seven. Where was the deck located? By gate seven. Was it located by gate six? No. But it's located by gate seven? Correct. So if this is a deck, would somebody consider it as gate seven? No, we call it the fingers. The fingers? Yes, sir. So the fingers isn't beside gate seven? It is. Okay. Do the fingers help designate cans to gate seven or not? At times or no? At times. All right, thank you. All right. Have you done any training regarding safety reviews or compliance with employees while I was employed there and I can review the date. I believe it was January 19th of 2019. 
until I think April, no, May something of 2020. Did you do any training or any reviews with with uh, the employees? Yes. Like myself, did you do any training with me? Yes. Do you recall or restate and state when that happened? In pre-works, we discussed safety on quite an often basis, at least a couple times a week. Pre-works was pre-works. Those are the meetings before anybody begins the operation. So that's discussing safety, that's not training. We did discuss safety and sometimes there were other training items that were discussed in those meetings, mm -hmm. but I do not conduct or have not conducted the training per se myself. Okay, who do you have to conduct your training? We have GSE operators, or I'm sorry, D GSE trainers. There's a number of them, Brandon. Um, Brandon who, last name? Granin. Okay. We have uh, Carl, and I can't recall Carl's last name at this time. It's Griffin. There you Do go. Can you uh, recite both of the races, please? For Mr. Granin and also Mr. Griffin. Brandon is Caucasian. Mm -hmm and Carl is uh, African-American. Okay, who decides who gets trained? I don't understand the question. Who decides who's the trainer and which employees get trained for your teams that you manage? The managers decide who goes to training and when manager? they're ready. It depends on who the employee works for. Okay. So are you suggesting it was Alonzo Wiley? Whom are you talking about? You going to training. The managers that suggest the training. Well, there are multiple work groups and multiple aspects of training at the ramp. Okay, can you elaborate on multiple aspects and what goes into deciding who gets trained, who doesn't get trained? I'm gonna eject the form. You can answer if you understand the question. I'm not understanding the question. Okay. Earlier you made a claim that somebody going to do their job despite they being trained by the two trainer GSC trainers that you claimed, but you claimed that employee even though you previously have no training or experience with the same equipment, but you claimed and declared that person can do so. So I'm asking you, who decides who does training? If you can't do training, who decides who gets to get trained or not? I, I'm going to object that misstates his testimony. You can answer the question if you understand it. Can you repeat the question? All right. Uh, let me see if I can make it simpler for you. Okay. You previously said you have no experience on top side loader, correct? Correct. You never trained anybody on top side loader, correct? Correct. And you're not a certified doctor, correct? Excuse me? You're not a doctor, correct? No. Thank you. Is Alonzo a doctor? No. Has Alonzo have any experience with a top side loader? I believe he has been trained on it. When? I don't have the training records in front of me. You don't of have me. the training records? And he was hired around the same time I was hired, correct? At the ramp? Yes. Or with FedEx? In 2019, January 2019. I don't recall FedEx. when he started at the ramp. Okay, do you know anybody by the name of Adam Ringel? Not Adam, no. Who was the previous manager that Alonzo Wiley replaced? Alan Ringel. Thank you, Alan Ringel. Alan Ringel. Was there a reason he was replaced? He transferred to another location. Okay, before you transfer to the location, do you have any disciplinary issues coming from you? No. He never got any letter or anything from you? No. Okay. Have you ever received any disciplinary letters? Yes. Okay. Any time recently? No. In the last 24 months? No. No disciplinary letter? No. So you were not suspended because of a Shane Dumas incident? No. You were never suspended? No. You were never investigated? I don't know if I was investigated. Okay. And regarding an accident on April 29th of 2020, can you review what happened that day? 
I don't recall the specific date. Can you be a little bit more clear? Your material handler witnessed an accident and reported it to his, his manager at the on duty at the next gate since they weren't at the gate with him. He reported to that manager. The next day he was suspended for a potential violation, not a specific violation, a potential violation, which would insinuate there was no reason determined they were looking for a reason. I'm going I'm to object. That's not a question. Um, do you have a question for him? I did ask a question. No, that I was asked a, that him was if a... he could recall what happened that day. Okay. He asked for clarity what happened that day, and I clarified it for him. Okay. You can't testify here because you're I'm not, not testifying. Okay. So he said he can't recall. I'm going to object. There is no question on the table. Now you can ask him a question. Okay. Again, I'll ask him the same question I asked him previously. Go ahead. Do you recall what happened April 29th of 2020? Did any accident get reported to you that day? I don't recall the specific date at this time, but mm -hmm. I believe it may have been around the time that something was reported at one of the gates, uh, a potential aircraft strike. Okay. Okay, what do you do if a potential aircraft strike is reported? We begin an investigation. What type of investigation? We gather statements, we gather facts, we gather any video evidence that's available. So did you do that? I didn't personally do all of that, but yes, I know it was done. You know it was done? How did you know it was done? Is this in reference to gate five? I'm asking the questions. I don't know the specifics of, of what we're talking about. I'm you, thinking you, there was an incident, but I don't know if that's the one on that particular date. Particular date. So do you handle them different depending on the gates? No. Okay, if there's an accident on gate five, how would it be handled? An accident or an aircraft strike? Previously you stated there's no different differentiation with an accident and an aircraft strike, a drop can, an aircraft strike. There's a difference though? There would be a difference in investigation. Okay. Aircraft strike. Okay. If we're talking about an aircraft strike, we would get statements from the people that are involved. Mm -hmm. We would review any video footage that's available. Mm -hmm. We would have aircraft maintenance look at the uh, aircraft to see the type of damage and the severity of the damage. We would make a report to uh, FedEx. There's a website, I can't think of the acronym at this time, but it's, uh, it's an aircraft strike report. That report would be made along with any other investigational information that we were able to obtain and a report would be produced. Okay. Aircraft strike report you said? Yes. And that was followed through? Correct. Okay. Do you have any records confirming this as you took place for that specific date? If there was an aircraft strike on that date, there would be information on it as far as uh, investigation. If there was no aircraft strike, there would not be a report that had been made. Okay, so it's reported. How do you determine whether it's true or not? based on the information of eyewitnesses and video footage. Video footage. So you're saying at least video footage was checked that day? Not by you, by somebody else, correct? Can I ask a question? Nope. Can you, I'm sorry. Or can I refer with my attorney for a second? There's a... I don't understand. If we're talking about the strike at gate five, that will help me make sure that that's the proper date. I do, do not. Do you want to clarify with him that you're talking about your reported aircraft strike? Mr. French, we're talking about that, but we want to make sure he follows the same procedure. I understand. Does this every other aircraft strike or can be considered discriminatory? Correct? No. Uh, if you, then I'll, I'll just say this. If you understand the question answered, if you don't, you can't answer the question. Can you repeat the question? 
same question. Those procedures that you just previously reviewed with me, were they followed when a reported aircraft strike on April 29th? If this is in reference to the aircraft strike you reported, all of those procedures were followed except for there was no aircraft damage report. It's an ADR. I remember the acronym now. ADR. There was no ADR that was reported because there was no strike. To whom reports it? Uh, the document is ADR. The manager would fill out the ADR. Alonzo Wiley does the ADR. Yes. Not the mechanic. No. Okay. And what date did this happen? On the 29th or the 30th? Did what happen? This ADR thing. What day would it happen? Would it be the same day of the being reported or would it be the next day? It should be done the same day. The same day? Yes. Okay. And how long usually does it take? Within the hour or not? Or later that day? Just, you know, same day thing. After information and investigation was completed and you had enough information to complete the ADR, it would be done. Okay. To see the video of the particular gate, you can see it at DFW, correct? Same day, same time? You could if, if corporate security was there, yes. Was corporate security present that day? I don't recall. You don't recall? Okay. Okay. Uh, I want to go back to the training. In terms of training, were you aware that employees with less tenure that particularly were usually Caucasian got trained over African American employees with more tenure, especially for captain training? I'm not aware of such. So it was never reported to you through a GFT or an IEEO internal complaint or internal open door office complaint or anything like that? I'm going to object to form. You can answer if you know. I know it may have been brought up in one of those such items, uh -huh. but it was not a practice at, at the ramp. It was not? No. So no, no complaints were ever levied against you through an emergency hotline or discrimination, harassment, or anything like that? I know allegations were made. However, it doesn't mean they're true. How many allegations? I don't know off the top of my head. Were there more than five? Probably. Okay. So, were they from the same individual or from multiple individuals? I believe most were from one individual. Yeah, but was it from one individual? That's not an answer. Was it from one individual or multiple individuals? I said one individual. Did all those complaints against you? Yes. The hotline? Okay, I just want to confirm that. You're under oath again. Hold, hold, hold on. He, you asked a question. If you want to answer, go ahead. What was the question again? An emergency hotline to confirm complaints of harassment, discrimination, etc., workplace violence. Did only one individual report or make a complaint against you, or did multiple individuals make complaints against you? I believe it was one individual making multiple complaints about the same issue. So it wasn't multiple, you're saying? That's a question. Objection. One or more. Okay. Object to form, you can ask. Answer. One person. One person made all those complaints object, against you. Object to form, you can answer. Yes. Only one person. Object to form, you can answer. To my recollection, yes. Okay, are you aware that your same attorney previously stated that it was more than one person? Object to form. If you know, you can answer that question. I don't recall saying such. Okay. All right, were complaints made against Brandon Grant and also? I believe so. Okay, you do believe so. And was that by the same individual? Yes. It was, okay. Brandon Grannon also got a Bravo Zulu Award for what year? I don't know specifics on when he received the Bravo Zulu Award. I know he's received multiple since I've been at the location. Okay, can you uh, explain what the Bravo Zulu Award is? It's when somebody goes above and beyond. Above and beyond? Yes. And do you know who picks, nominates that particular individual? Usually their manager. Usually their manager? You say usually. Did that not happen this time? Did you play a part in it by any chance? 
I don't believe so. Okay. But you say usually. Was there anything different to happen? In regards to Brandon? Uh -huh. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. All right. Does Tony Julace ring a bell to you? Can you repeat the last name? G U L L A C E. It sounds like a former employee. Okay. Did she file a complaint to Human Resources regarding the ramp activities under your leadership to Human Resources? Not that I recall. So you never had a meeting with the team and following up her complaints to Human Resources? I don't recall. You don't recall? So no employee outside of myself has made complaints to Human Resources? Ob object to form. You can answer that if you know that. There have been other have been employees. Other than myself? Yes. Do, do what ways? How did they do that? I don't understand the question. If they're making complaints about your leadership on the ramp, how did they do that? I don't recall if they're specifically about my leadership. Okay. You asked about complaints. Complaints, exactly. Such as safety violations, discrimination, harassment, and also sexual misconduct. Objective form, what's the question? Were there complaints made about your leadership on the ramp? Do those interviews, human resources, the hotline, and any other human resources alternatives, such as GTFP, open door process, or the IEEO process? Okay, objective form. You're asking, that you, the question has so many subparts to it. I mean, how is he supposed to answer that? It's a simple question, Mr. French. Has he had any complaints about his leadership and what avenues they were taking to report it? Okay, is that your question? Yes, he answered yes, and then he, all of a sudden, I guess you're trying to block him answering what avenues those not, individuals took. I'm just, I don't under, I didn't understand the question, but you can answer that question that he asked just now. We have had complaints. I don't recall specifics. What avenues did those complaints he reported to you? They might come up in a GFTP. Uh -huh. um, they could be in an employee coming and sitting and talking to me about an issue at the ramp. Uh, that would be an open door. Or uh, I believe there had been a complaint or two on the alert line, but we don't know specifics of what employees report those. On the alert line by other employees? Correct. Okay. That contradicts the previous answer you said previously, but I digress. With that being I, said, I'm going to object to that remark on the record. You don't get to berate him and say that. You can ask a question. I, I respectfully said I digress. I think I'm just okay. to be honest. I'm just trying to get clear. He's saying inconsistency, okay. so I'm just trying to be clear with him that I, it doesn't register with me that he said something totally opposite of that previously. Okay, but you you can't you can't be disrespectful to him. I don't think I disrespect him. I think you're disrespecting me by talking over me and talking down to me, sir. Okay. All right, go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Were there any changes in the attendance policy during the COVID, I guess the onset of COVID? Were there any changes to the attendance policy? In terms of you know people getting in a little bit late, I believe there was a moment where you gave a letter if people were stopped by the police, you know, to let them get into work. Is that true? I'm an objective form. You can answer. We gave all employees a uh, a letter from FedEx Express, letting them know they were a. Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? A, a vital worker. I can't remember the exact term of it. Um, a, uh, to let them know that they needed to be out and come to work. And they're essential workers, essential correct? That's the word I was looking for. Okay. Thank you. Was there a grace period in spring of 2020 regarding tardies? 
I don't recall that there was a, a grace period for punctuality. Mm -hmm. At all? I don't recall. Okay. You don't recall, so you're not sure. So that's not a yes or no answer, correct? I don't recall if there was a change to policy okay. for punctuality. Okay. Did you continue training during this same uh, moment, during the COVID moment? Was there still training going on? Initially, no. Initially, no? Okay. When did training begin during this period? I don't recall a specific date. Okay. But training did occur at one point in time, correct? Yes. Who was trained? Were it new hires, such as typically, say, where the discrepancy started to show itself? Object to form, if you understand the question. You yeah. I don't understand the discrepancy that he's talking about. Okay. If there was complaints previously filed of older hires with more tenure than new hires that were predominantly African-American not getting trained, but new hires that were predominantly Caucasian getting trained, especially with captain's training, what happened there? How, who, who decided who got trained? You said it was by the managers, correct? Objective form, you can answer if you understand the question. I don't understand the question. When training occurred back during the uh, COVID era, who decided who got trained? The manager. Okay. That manager, was he okay to train new hires over more tenure hires? It depended on what he needed trained at the time and what was available. What was right? Okay. Safety records. In terms of accidents, how did you evaluate your employees? Based on accidents or based on race? I'll check the form if you can answer the question if you understand that. Evaluate how? Their value to you, what they get trained on, what they don't get trained on, what they're allowed to do, what they're not allowed to do. I didn't determine training. You didn't at all? No. Did Brandon Grannon determine training? Not that I'm aware of. Not that you're aware of. So you're saying Alonzo Wiley picked all the training? Object to form, Ms. State's testimony, you can answer. That would be who schedules it, yes. Okay. So Alonzo Wiley chose who trained and who didn't train, correct? This is what you're saying? Yes. Oh. In terms of the events of December 4th or 5th of 2020, well, 2019, what occurred that day? I don't recall the specifics of that date. Okay. Can I clarify? Sure. I believe the last two weeks of October, the whole month of November, and then beginning of December, you had myself assigned to gate seven on the top side loader. Later on, you know, no accidents occurred, of course. You began to, you know, yell or ask me to go faster and faster on wet pavement in the freezing cold weather. In Gate seven to you know line up the plane. Were there any flights missed in late 2019, October, November, December, that you can associate to me? Are you you're just that's the question? Are you asking him if he recalls everything you said before yeah. that? Uh, okay, let me clear up, clarify. Okay. Were there any accidents, late flights associated? to McDavid Oyekwes operating the topside loader on gate seven in the last three months of 2019. I do not recall any specifics as far as late flights or issues as such. Okay. Did you or did you not request McDavid Oyekwe get an accommodation in late 2019? I did not request McDavid get an accommodation. That would have been done by you. So you didn't request I sign the EPA form in late December 2019? I'm, I'm not understanding. You're not understanding? Okay. No, I don't understand the question. Did I make it? You know Marion Ryan, Ryan, I think it is, right? The name again, please. Marion Ryan. R-A-Y-N-E. 
Miriam Rains? Yeah. Yes, I know who she is. How do you know her? She is the HCMP uh, manager. And what does she do? She handles HCMP issues. Can you elaborate what type of issues those are? Human capital resource management. Um, she handles uh, people with leaves, people that would request accommodations. Okay, um, with the lease part, can you elaborate on leaves? What specifically would you like to know? What does leave mean? How do you go about it? What are the reasons for it? If an employee is out for a period of time, usually more than seven days, HCMP handles the management of their case, whether it be for a personal leave, a medical leave, uh, FMLA, or any of the other type of associated leaves that FedEx has. All right, personal leave. Can you elaborate what that is? It's where an employee is given time off without pay for a period of time to handle issues that aren't covered under other leave policies. Okay. Who qualifies for that? I'm not an expert in that area. Whose choice is it? It depends on the situation. Okay. What situation? Would it be out of that employee's control? If they fail training in a particular area, didn't uh, meet the qualifications, if they were a new hire, perhaps, um, if they had a other personal situation that they needed time off for, that they weren't qualified for either FMLA or they weren't required for any kind of medical leave status. Okay. Do I meet any of those criteria? Object to form. Did I meet any of those criteria? Oh, did you meet? Yeah. Object to form, you can answer. Yes. Which one? You were not able to perform the essential functions of your job and you were given time off to be able to find a position for which you were qualified. What essential function of the job and material could I not do? You had stated that you had a fear of heights, which meant you couldn't be up on an aircraft on the top side. <laughs> You had stated that you had a fear of being on the loader for your personal safety. Okay. Who told oh, hold, you this and hold, when did they tell you this? Hold on. He's not done answering. you got to let him finish. Are you done? I'm done. Okay. He's done. Okay. Who and when did this told to you? You had stated it. To you? Yes, sir. When? It was after a pre-work meeting. I can't remember the specific date at this time. Um, we had received an alert line notice mm. that somebody felt that they were unsafe and being forced to perform uh, at heights and they had made it clear to management that they weren't comfortable doing that. However, we had no record of such. We didn't know who it was, so we had said in a pre-work meeting, if anybody had an issue with that, to please let us know that we don't want you operating equipment at heights. Uh, or if you had an issue to come talk to us. And after that meeting, you approached me with Alonzo Wiley present and said that you had an issue and a fear of heights. I disagree with that statement. My next question would be, previously, the six weeks prior, did you report any lack of essential, essential job skills not being able to be done that, those previous six weeks? Did you? In regards to whom? Myself. Not that I recall. So, my hire date was January 19th of 20, 2019, and this happened in December of 2019, almost a year, tenure, and you're claiming heights, and you're not a doctor. Uh, objective form, there's multiple questions there if you okay. understand. A year on the ramp, you're claiming an employee cannot perform essential functions. Object to form, it's not what he said. That's clearly what he said. You can answer the question. He's asking you if you said that. No, I did not say that. In your letter requesting accommodation on myself, you claimed that I could not perform the essential functions of workers, but I did it any did it the whole year, pretty much. You couldn't even identify a particular an actual job role that I couldn't do. Is it true you had workers on the ramp with suspended licenses? 
Not that I'm aware. So you never knew of an employee hitting a parked gas truck and not becoming aware that she had a suspended license? I know an employee struck a fuel truck. Exactly. Did McDavid or yet yeah, ever strike a fuel truck? Not that I'm aware of. Was this same employee given a personal leave of absence or anything like that? Objective form. I, Were they suspended in any way? No, I mean, who are you talking about? You? No. A Lenore Unificer? Oh, okay. St struck the gas truck. And I believe it wasn't her first accident. But she struck the gas truck. Her license was found to be suspended for quite some time. You object to form. If you know that or understand that, you can answer that. Do you question. understand a double standard? Object to form. You can. Which question am I answering? I, I don't know. Do you know what a double standard is? I believe I do. Okay. Do you believe that you gave employees a pass and some employees not a pass, even if they were doing their job correctly, you just took a disliking to their race? So you were perhaps harder on them. Did you put African-American employees in tougher positions than you put Caucasian employees? No. Such as training your Caucasian employees to be captains and not train your African American employees to be captains. Objective form. He's asking you if you're racist. You can answer the question. No. Again, was it ever reported to you that your training methods were considered discriminatory? Ever? I know an accusation was made, but it was unfounded. When was the accusation made? I don't recall the specific date. But the accusation was made. You do recognize that the accusation was made, correct? Yes. Lenore, did she have more tenure than myself? I do not know. She did. Was she trained for being a captain? Was she? Captain trained. I don't know if she completed the training. She completed the training. She reported it to me, and I reported it. That's when all of a sudden she was suspended, which I consider retaliation, but anyway, the points, to get to the point, did Lenore Unifer get suspended before April 29th of 2020? I don't recall the dates. You don't recall the dates? No. Was she suspended? I believe she was. She was suspended? Do you remember how long? No. In a workplace accident, how long do the investigations take? It depends on each situation. Each situation, so aircraft strikes, usually an ADR is going to be in the first 24 hours, correct? Correct. For a job can, it could be longer? Shouldn't be. It shouldn't be, but it can be. It may. Okay, so a whole month it could be for a job can. Shouldn't be. It shouldn't be? Why would it be? I don't know. Okay. She was suspended for a job can for a whole month after her captain's training. And it looks like the only she was suspended is because she reported to the people that she got picked over the train that happened to be African-American that reported it on you. Do you understand that? I don't understand your question. Never mind. Safety records, can you tell me any safety violations that I broke as an employee or as a material man, uh, handler on the rampant? Objective form, you can answer if you know. I believe you had dropped the container at one time. Mm -hmm. Do you recall the date? No. You don't recall the date? No. Okay. So, in your request that I take a leave of absence and get accommodation, what factors led into that at the end of the year? Check the form, ask an answer, you can answer again. Um, Am I answering the first question he asked or the second two that you he can ask said? for clarification? Can you clarify? What led your decision? What violation did I do to be put on a leave of absence, a personal leave of absence against my will? You stated that you were unsafe performing your job. Okay. Are you a doctor? No. Okay. Again, did I have previous complaints against you? 
I don't recall the timetable of all the complaints that you had against me. Okay. So but you're saying I came and confided in you and said, I'm scared of heights, even though I've worked with heights the whole year. Yes, you did. Okay. Did other employees have fear heights at FedEx on your ramp? Objective form, you can answer if you know. We have one other employee at okay. this time. And what happened with that employee? That employee is following the same process that was applied to you. That person's on leave of absence? Yes. Okay. In terms of the accident of a suspended license, did that result in a leave of absence? I don't recall the, the suspended license portion of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do believe that, that the accident resulted in an investiga investigative suspension. Investigative suspension? Yes. Okay. Can I pull out exhibit one? Yeah, it's uh, all your stuff right Thank you. I'd like you to review exhibit one, please. Do you uh, have a copy for me? Yeah, copy for me. I don't. I printed just. Okay. Here. I need to see it. <laughs> Am I reading it now? Okay. <laughs> hmm? You want to read it out? Read what out? The letter. What do you mean, read it out? Did you want to read it out? No. Okay. No, no. I just needed to look at it. Yeah. Could you explain that letter, please? It says that Alonzo Wiley suspended you effective immediately for an investigative suspension for a potential violation of policy 2-5. All right. A potential, correct? Correct. Is that potential or specific? No, it's to give them opportunity to determine the circumstances and the facts. Okay. Did that result in any questioning with me or any interview with me? I don't know. Okay. Is that less than 24 hours after I reported an aircraft strike on the ramp? It doesn't have a time on here. Okay. Were you aware that Laws of Wiley was doing this? Yes. Okay, how did you become aware of it? And when did you become aware of it? Objective form, there's two questions you can answer both okay. if you know. The first one would be how, and then we'll go to when. It was brought to my attention. I don't recall specifically who brought it to my attention. Who? So this was a confidential matter. It was a confidential matter. Then you would know who? I don't recall specifically who, whether it came from HR or it came from Mr. Wiley. So, HR, correct? HR gave you, told you to do this, and then you had a lot of Wiley to do it? When we suspend somebody, we always get the concurrence of HR. Uh -huh. We check with people that are in human resources to make sure we are doing the proper process. Okay, so did that occur on the 29th or the 30th? I don't recall. You don't recall? What time did I receive this? I do not see a time on here. Okay. Could you confirm, did I work that day? I don't know if you worked that day. If I worked that day, would that be considered insubordination? upon receipt of this letter. I had to go to work to receive that, correct? Okay, so objective form, I'm not sure which question you're asking him. Okay. You asked him if it was insubordination, then you asked him if you had to go to work to get this. Mr. French, I asked him previously, when did he find out about this letter? He said he knew, and then he said he don't know who told him. That asked him when, he said he doesn't know. It's two simple days. The aircraft strike was reported on the 29th. Mm -hmm. Less than 24 hours I received this. This wasn't mailed to my house. This was given to me. He can't identify the time it was given to me, but he said he had prior knowledge when this would be given to me. And he previously said, gate five, 
he has good knowledge about a gate five accident, but he can't tell me when and who instructed him to do this. Was it Alonzo White's decision or HR's decision to do so? He would know. And if that's true, that means he's lying previously to say there's no investigation in the first place. Because if HR is doing it, that means Alonzo Wiley didn't do this ADR or air pack strike reports that he's talking about. If he did all that, that would have been done on the 29th. So therefore, I believe he's lying. I'm doing that respectfully. Okay. I understand you think he's lying in your argument. I guess what I'm saying is, is he, I think your question previously was, what time did you receive it? He said he doesn't know. He doesn't know. So you could ask... If you want to ask him another question about what he knows, he only knows what he knows. Exactly, but I think he knows because he previously alluded that he knows, and then he coughed and said, I don't know. Then he coughed? He, he changed his mind, basically. Okay. He alluded to that saying he knew now. He says he doesn't know. I, I know you don't like the answer, but you ask if you want to ask him a question, you I'm just, ask I just sm I just smell a lot. That's all I'm saying. Okay. All right. Go ahead. It's your deposition. Thank you, sir. Okay, typically, how does this go then? If you don't know how and when, how does this go? Because uh, Lenore Unifer was suspended, I believe, two weeks before this, correct? And how did how does the suspension go? What's the process? I don't recall Lenore's specific data suspension or where it relates to this. Do you want me to clarify that for you? If he doesn't know, he can't testify. Exactly, okay. This suspension happened a day after my aircraft report. It CCs you on there. Alonzo Wiley has to get your approval to suspend a boy, correct? No. He doesn't? No. So when did you find out I was suspended? I don't recall the specific time. You don't recall the specific time or day? No. Okay. And you don't know if I worked that day, correct? But you know this wasn't mailed to me. This was given to me by hand. It was given to me hand in the guard shack before I could even get onto the premises the very following day of that particular accident that was reported that you previously said no ADR was on an aircraft strike port and there's no follow-up questions to that allegation of aircraft strike, correct? Objective form, I don't know what the question is. Was there any follow-up to the aircraft strike reported? Follow-up to the aircraft. Answer if you need Yes. Know. What was the follow-up? We completed an investigation. What investigation? Did it involve the person who reported it? I believe you actually gave a statement about it. That same day, but was there any follow-up to it? I don't know if he spoke to you again about it. Exactly, he didn't. I was suspended instead. And you know that, correct? I don't think the two had a relation. They don't have a relation? No. Within 24 hours? The aircraft strike had nothing to do with your suspension for that. You sure? How yes. do you know that? Because I know why you were suspended. Why was it suspended? Because of insubordination. What's insubordination? It says potential. What insubordination occurred? Well, I can say it was insubordination now after the investigation was completed. It was because you kept continuing to harass upper management. What upper management did I harass? I don't have all the names off the top of my head. Names? Yes. What names? How were they harassed? I don't have all the specifics but you of just your interaction. No. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Let yeah, him finish. Please, one person he's got to gotta finish his answer. I don't know all the specifics of your interactions with them. I do know that the generality was is that you had continued to contact upper management after you had been told not to. By who? By Julie and HR. I believe it was Jay at the time. Okay. That occurred on the 20, early in the 20th of that month. And you were also told about abusing the GFTP open door policies and you were being abusive to the process and told not to do that anymore. And you continued to do such. And that is what the suspension was, was regarding. Okay. Who told you that? It's in the documents from the GFTP that you filed. It's also in the notes that I've seen in regards to uh, uh, the letter what that you were issued. What letter? Who told you that? When somebody's arrested, they have to report that, correct? When somebody's what? Being arrested, they report that, correct? 
I don't understand what, what, what do you mean by harassed? You said I was harassed somebody, correct? There's been sexual harassment on the ramp, correct? Doing my thing here, correct? Okay, hold on. Objection to form. Okay, yeah, thank you. Was there sexual harassment during my tenure on the DFW ramp? Answer if you know. None that I know of. There was no sexual misconduct by Pedro Batista. I don't recall. Pedro Batista was not reassigned to AFW from DFW because of a sexual misconduct. No. Okay. Or fraternizing? No. What about Alonzo Wiley? What about Alonzo Wiley? Do you have any sexual misconduct or fraternizing? Not that I'm aware of. Not that you're aware of. Okay. Do you know a Jordan Starling? I recognize the name. Okay. Did he have any situation of sexual misconduct on the DFW ramp? I don't recall the specifics of his issues. You don't recall specifics issues. of his issues? So there's no sexual misconduct under your leadership at DFW? I don't recall any. You don't recall any, correct? Yes. Did you have a previous manager by the name of Pedro Batista during my tenure? Yes, Pedro did work as a manager. Did he leave to AFW afterwards? Yes. Why? He chose to transfer. He chose to transfer. There was no disciplinary issues there? No. At all? No. Same with Alonzo Wiley. Alonzo didn't leave. Yeah, but did he have a disciplinary issue? No. He did not. Okay. With that being said, we've been going about an hour. Do you want to take a break? You need a break? No, I mean, I was just asking because you were looking at your notes. I'd like so. to use the restroom. Okay. Okay. Can, can we go off the record? Yeah, right. Okay, we're going to go off record at 10.49 a.m. And we are back on record at 10.57 a.m. All right. All right. Uh, I guess I'm still on exhibit one. Okay. Uh, you said that uh, you saw on the record that uh, I was harassing. Where did, where did you come to the conclusion I was harassing? I don't understand your question. You said I was harassing senior management. Where did you come to the conclusion I was harassing senior management? I didn't come up with the conclusion. Who did? Upper management. Upper management? Who? It was determined that you were abusing the reporting systems of FedEx. And it, it was in response to your, from your, your meeting between Jay and Julie and then you continued to file two more GFTPs from that after you were told to not to do that continuously. Were you there? No, but I was given that information as to... By who? It was either Julie or Jay. Julie or Jay, correct? Julie or Jay told you they told me, but I didn't get anything like that in writing, correct? I don't know. You don't know? No. But you were told this, so... This could be considered word of mouth, rumor mill, article only correct. I don't understand the question. The letters I got in writing from Julie Hughes always told me to contact HR if there's any issues or concerns or retaliation or harassment, especially continuing under your direct leadership. Okay. Is that not true? I don't know. Okay. So, if I was directly to contact HR, how is that? To the rest. And, and just for the record, you just said that this wasn't your decision. This was above you. Correct? The This particular document, I did not uh, initiate that, but it's, it's not discipline. It's to allow for the opportunity to gather information. It's not discipline? No. It's not discipline. Was there any investigation or with me regarding these potential violations? I don't understand what you're asking. When you have a potential issue 
that means there's a lack of clarity. You got to gather the facts, correct? That's what an investigative suspension is for, yes. Exactly. Was I called, interviewed, or anything I don't regarding know. these potential violations? I don't know. But it has UCC'd and Mr. J. Johnson. And for the record, can you confirm who Mr. J. Johnson is? He's our HR representative. Who was before him? Ed, uh, I can't think of Ed's last name right Harvey. now. Harvey. Harvey, correct. He's African American, correct? Yes. How long was he there? Was he where? In that position. I don't know. You don't know? Did you have a relationship with him? As our HR rep, yes. You did? But you have also a relationship with Mr. J. Johnson, right? As our HR rep, yes. Exactly. Ed Harvey was there for quite a longer time than Mr. Johnson, correct? I don't know. Okay. What's the race of Mr. Harvey? African American. A race of Mr. Johnson? Caucasian. Okay. When did Mr. Harvey get replaced by Mr. Johnson? Mr. Harvey wasn't replaced by Mr. Johnson. Mr. Harvey retired. He retired? Yes. Did he retire by force? No. You sure? Yes. Okay. Was this ever announced that he was investigating previous complaints against you? Uh, who was? Mr. Harvey. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. This happened in December 2019, correct? I don't recall when he retired. Okay. But how long did it take to replace him with Mr. Johnson? I don't know the span between each. Okay. But Mr. Johnson replaced Mr. Harvey pretty quick. And he came from Las Vegas, correct? I don't, I'm not 100% sure where uh, Jay came from. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Harvey and Mr. Jay Johnson, when you had concerns of this personal leave of absence action that you initiated, correct? Or did it go above you too? Object Which personal leave? I'm sorry. Objective form, two questions you can answer if you understand. Can you repeat the question? The leave of absence. Who initiated it, you or somebody above you? This, this right here? No, not this one. The previous leave of absence. In December of 2019, you gave it to me on New Year's Day with Alonzo Wiley. New Year's Eve, I mean. That was with the concurrence of HR. Huh? But who initiated it? You? Your manager. Huh? Your manager. Oh, Alonzo Wiley initiated it. Yes. Okay. All right. So that was Alonzo Wiley, the leave of absence. As far as I recall. Okay. But this one you said was HR. This was a you, correct? This was initiated by Alonzo Wiley. Okay. Previously. I don't know who. Literally right before the break, you said it was above you. Alonzo Wiley's built. He concurred with those you. above us. Hold on. Hold on. Guys, one at a I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. One at a time, thank you. I'm sorry. Why don't you re-ask whatever you were asking? Right before break, you said it came above you. Now, you say it was Alonzo Wiley that initiated this right here. For Alonzo Wiley to initiate this, does he need your approval? Okay, objection that misstates the testimony. He said Alonzo Wiley. He misstated his own testimony. Hold on, hold on. He said Alonzo Wiley initiated the leave of absence. You're now pointing back to the suspension. Exactly. Okay, so you ask him about the suspension. He said Alonzo Wiley initiated the last one, the leave of absence. This is his uh, investigation with the suspension with pay. Remember the last one was a leave of absence without pay. This is suspension with pay. He's saying Alonzo Wiley's initiated this one or somebody above him. Because right before break, literally 15 minutes ago, he said it was somebody above him. Okay. So and what's he's your... been at the company longer than Mr. Wiley. So what's Either your... he likes to lie to African Americans or he just doesn't want to tell the truth. Okay. I object to that comment. Um, what, what, what is your question? My question is, who initiated this investigation suspension with pay? Was it above him or was it Alonzo Wiley? You can answer if you know. This was issued by Alonzo Wiley. Okay. Do you admit previously you said it was above you? For the record, did you previously say that before the break that this came above you? It's mischaracterizing what I said. Okay, you can answer. Go ahead and tell him why. You're mischaracterizing what I said. Okay. The, now, how do you know the, for sure that Alonzo Wiley initiated this, but you don't know when he gave it to him? Does he work without your approval? Okay, so objective form, which question are you asking him? 
how does he know it was Alonzo Wiley this time and not senior management HR that he said 15 minutes ago? How does he know the difference and how does he know for sure this time? Because he could change his answer again. Okay, so you can, if you understand the question, you can answer. I know it was issued by Alonzo Wiley because it has his name and signature right here. Mm -hmm. In regard to where I was saying that this all came about from your interaction with upper management and Alonzo Wiley was the one to issue this letter. Okay, he's the one to issue this letter, but who mandated it? Whose decision was it? Was it Alonzo Wiley just a delivery man, the messenger, or was he the one who called it? Since you were Alonzo Wiley's employee, mm -hmm. he issued this suspension pending investigation based on your interaction with upper management, those above me. Okay. Those above you, correct? Correct. How would he know that? Objective form calls for speculation. Answer if you know. I don't know who initiated it. Okay. That. Is the open door policy, GTFP, IEEO, any of that confidential? I would think all of it would be. Okay. Then how would that be? And also, if it's documented that I was never told not to reach out to human resources, I was actually directed in writing from Julie Hughes, how is that insubordination? Okay. Objective form. Uh, it's argumentative. And it states fact. He, if you know, you can answer that question. I, I don't have the documents either way. You know, but you said you saw previous notes and all this, correct? You said that previously, 15 minutes ago, or 20 if that helps you. I saw your termination letter. Mm -hmm. Termination letter, correct? Mm -hmm. And during my leave of absence, was I considered employee or not employee during that leave of absence? You were an employee who was on a leave of absence. Mm -hmm. Correct? But I was allowed to return, correct? Why was I allowed to return? I don't know. You don't know? No. And you want to repeat, you're not a doctor, correct? I am not a doctor. Okay. Why was I allowed to return? I don't know. You don't know at all? Objective form asked and answered. You can answer again. Maybe your statements or in a misstatements that I was afraid of ice, even though I proved it clearly wasn't afraid of ice, were found to be not true, I was allowed to return. What happened after I returned? There were a couple questions there. Yeah, I, objective form, Which? what is the question you're asking him? The leave of absence. Yes. Said I cannot return to a material handle role. Eventually I returned to a material handle role. So that suggests that somebody was wrong. Or lying. Okay, that's an argument. What's your question to him? My question is, did he know why I was allowed to return? Okay, there you go. No. Okay. With that being said, did you feel like it was a good or bad decision? I didn't know the specifics of it. You didn't know the specifics of it. Okay. Do you know anybody by the name of Will Alexander? Yes. Did you fire Will Alexander? No. You never terminated him? No. Okay. Did you terminate a Shane Dumas? No. You never fired him, a Shane Dumas? I did not. Upon return from a suspension? I did not. You did not? He was terminated from FedEx, but okay. I didn't do it. You didn't do it? No. Was he offered his job back after this termination? Not that I'm aware of. Not that you're aware of, okay. What was the issue with Shane Dumas being terminated? Was it a safety violation? No. Did he report a safety violation previously before his termination? Not that I recall. Not that you recall. You don't. So you're saying you don't know, correct? I don't recall. Okay. When this happened, when you got notice of this, did you know, understand that I reported a aircraft strike 24 hours before? Yes. Okay. Did you the ask... Did, can I ask a question, or do you want to speak? Well, what, he's trying to answer your question. Can you let him finish his answer? But I'm, I'm sure you're not thinking for his brains. Uh, he can speak. I'm asking him. I mean, quiet. 
What did you say? I didn't hear what you said first. I think you're interrupting him. It's not me. I think it was you interrupting. Okay. Do you have more of an answer you were no. giving? Okay. Okay. Can I speak again? I don't know. Can you? All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. With this being said, with this being given, you were aware of an aircraft strike being reported on the 29th and then a suspension on the 30th given the very following day. Did you get a heads up of the investigation or potential suspension prior to that? Or did you find out when you CC'd on this? Did Alonzo Wiley work completely independent of your management in the leave of absence and also this investigation suspension out back? I was aware of it. When? At some point before it was executed. At one point before it was executed? I don't recall. Would you say a day before? I don't recall. So you was aware of it, correct? So I wasn't aware of it, but you were aware of it, correct? I don't know what you were aware of. You don't know what I was aware of? I just reported an accident, and I didn't see this. I come to work, and I'm all suspended out of nowhere. I wasn't put to a meeting with you or Mr. Wiley asking me, did we tell you not to do this or that? So can you confirm I had no meeting with you regarding this suspension? He at least confirmed that. No meeting regarding what and when? This particular accusation. There is no accusation there. There is an accusation. It says potential violation. That's an accusation, sir. Okay, I'm going to object. That's an argument. What's the question again? Did he have any previous meeting with me regarding this particular concern? Okay. Him or Mr. Wiley? Okay, so I guess the question is, did you meet with him about the suspension before he was suspended? You can answer. I did not. Okay. Was there a warning before this particular letter? Not that I'm aware of. Thank you. All right. Can you proceed with exhibit two? Let me see it real quick. Okay. Do you understand what was on that letter? Yes. Okay. Can you explain it to me? It's a statement by Shane Dumas. Okay. Was he fired before the OSHA investigator was able to uh, speak to him? I Precisely one week before OSHA came to visit? I do not know the specific timeline. I believe he was terminated in October. November 4th, I believe, uh, OSHA came to FedEx. Was he terminated? Was he uh, still an employee of FedEx at the time of OSHA's visit to the DFW ramp? I wasn't aware OSHA spoke to Shane. Okay. He wasn't aware because he wasn't an employee at the time, correct? I don't know. Don't I don't know. know when they spoke. You don't want to, did, did you speak to OSHA? Yes. You did? What did you call that day? Who was, who was, who was your ramp manager that day? It was in, in a... a I believe we spoke to him during a, uh, what do you call it, a uh, hearing with you. Hmm. There was no answer. I don't recall the hearing. I believe he did everything separately. But did you speak to him privately, or did you have a one-on-one -on -one or anything like that? I think I was asked some questions by an OSA investigator, but I don't recall it specifically. Okay. Are you asking him about whether he spoke to OSHA regarding Shane Dumas? I was asking him, Are you? was Shane Dumas an employee the day he interviewed with OSHA? And was Shane Dumas terminated one week before 
folks who visited FedEx DFW ramp. Okay, but are you talking about with your incident or are you talking about Shane Dumas? My incident and Shane Dumas had his own separate incident. I believe that has something to do with COVID and I believe he got him suspended. But long story short, Shane Dumas was terminated, I believe upon his return, but it was also a week right before OSHA came to investigate my complaint. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Thank you. <clears throat> In terms of witnesses regarding the investigation, who did all the uh, OSHA investigators speak to? I don't know who they all spoke to. Okay, who provided him video evidence and footage of the incident? FedEx did. FedEx did? Okay. Did they provide one or two videos? I don't recall how many videos there were of it. I believe there was only one angle. There was only one angle? Did you see it? Yes. You saw it? What did you see? I saw the loader moving up to the aircraft. I saw it reposition. I did not see it strike it. The loader? The crew stairs, I'm sorry. The crew stairs. Who did you see in the video? I don't recall the names of the people. Did you see myself in the video? Yes. Where did you see me in the video? Standing roughly 20 feet in front of the aircraft. 20 feet from the aircraft. Thank you. Uh, just for the record, the video was shown that AFW did not have me standing in front of the aircraft. And that was last month, right? Right. Are you, you're asking me about what? The video that you, get, you granted me to see at uh, AFW. It didn't have me standing in front of the aircraft on that video. Okay. So I just want to let you know there's a difference there. But uh, thank you for that uh, clarification. It's greatly appreciated. But in terms of that, would you say Mr. Dumas is untruthful in the statement or telling the truth? Object to form. You can't speculate it to that. Uh, go ahead. Answer, I guess. Can you repeat the question? Did Shane Dumas give a statement the day of the accident? I don't know if he gave a statement that day. Okay. Did Joseph Agnew give a statement that day? I don't recall. Did you see a ramp manager on the video of the, you know, suspected accident? I do not recall. You do not recall. Okay. So, what witnesses do you know or was this all done confidentially by Alonzo Wiley? I know there were statements from the people that were at the gate. Mm -hmm. I don't recall the names of who they were. And the mechanic? And a mechanic. He made a statement? Yes. Okay. Is there any chance I can be provided that copy of that statement? For the record, can I request a copy of the mechanic's statement? You, you've been provided with all the statements in our position. So I didn't get anything <clears throat> provided to the mechanic. I had to get uh, the name of the mechanic through uh, Lenore. You know, for, I never even knew about the mechanic until it was mentioned in her uh, her uh, dispute with y'all. Do you hear me, Mr. French? I'm sorry, what? I never got any statement regarding the mechanic's statement. Okay, I've that. turned over everything I've got. Okay, so, but if I'm saying there's nothing regarding a statement from him, there isn't, but he's saying there is a statement from the mechanic. Okay, so somebody lied or can you find a way to... I've turned over everything i got. So is there a way you can find it, see if there, it does exist, or you need to tell Mr. Mogens that he made a misstatement? You want me to tell him no, he's I'm made a misstatement? No, I'm asking you, is there a way to rectify and come to a conclusion if the mechanic had made a statement or not? Because what you provided me, they had no statement from that mechanic. Okay, then I guess we don't have a statement from the mechanic. Okay, so are you saying he was lying? No. Okay. All right, thank you. But in regards to this statement, do you agree with it or do you disagree with it? I won't say that I agree or disagree with, with the whole thing. There are some inaccuracies in there. Or, or speculation, I should say. Speculations? Mm-hmm. Okay. Previously, uh, previously, you said you had nothing to do with the investigation. It was clearly to Alonzo Wiley. So I was assuming you took his word for it that no accident happened. But you said you did your own investigation yourself. And you don't agree with these these notions that are stated right here by two of your rank managers that were actually present that day. Were you in your office at this time? I'm sorry, the question again? 
Were you in your office at the time of the accident? I don't know where I was on the ramp. You don't know where you are? Usually on a typical day, where are you? I'm either on the ramp or in my office. I mean, you're not in the uh, warehouse with the other employees? Could be. Okay. That would be on the ramp. I consider that. Outside is on the ramp? Sorry, if you could just let him finish oh, so, okay. this answer, right. please. Thank you. To clarify, mm -hmm. I was either on the ramp, in the warehouse, or in my office. Okay. Or perhaps a restroom. Okay. To be on the ramp, don't you have to have a sight of badge, correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. I'd like to move to exhibit three, please. Do <clears throat> you read this, please? Hold on, can I see it real quick? Mm -hmm. Also given by Alonzo Wiley, correct? Your CC J is easy to add R V C C. Did I ever get to meet with a Jay Johnson before this was decision was made? I don't know who you met with. You met with him. About the accommodation letter? You don't recall that? I'm sorry, the question again is? I believe you said I had a week to uh, fill out an accommodation letter and give it to Mary and Ryan. It was like a week or two or something like that in December. Are, are you asking me if he said that or? I'm asking him, did I ever meet with a Jay Johnson regarding this decision? Do I even know who Jay Johnson was at the time? You, you can answer the question if you know. I do not know who you met with. Okay. Do you remember the Pacific Day Ed Harvey transition to Jay Johnson? No, I do not. You don't. Okay. So, during the... Your, do you recall you trying to force me to sign a, a combination letter? Do you recall that? No. You don't recall that? that Having a meeting with me and say I need to sign? No, I did not force you to sign anything. I didn't sign, but I'm saying, did you suggest I sign a combination letter at any point? No. You never suggested I sign a combination letter? No. Okay, just one moment. It says it's a leave of absence, but that's not a termination, correct? Correct. All right. Did you take my badge from me that day? I did not. You did not take my badge that day? I don't recall me personally taking your badge, no. So you didn't personally come to the break room, summon me to your office upstairs to give me this letter and take my badge and my coat? Me personally? Yes. I don't recall that. You don't recall that. So you had nothing to do with this. You were you were busy. You were not even out on FedEx Park when this happened. Alonzo did this totally by himself. Objective form. Did you, you can, even ask to speak to me? Hold, 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 hold on. <laughs> Objective form. You can answer the question if you understand it. Are you withdrawing the question? No, I'm not withdrawing the question. What I'm saying is, he's CC'd here, so he's clearly aware of it. But was he not present the day this was given to me? Were you not present the day to give me an accommodation letter request to sign? I don't understand your question. All right, it's going to be two questions. Hopefully I make sense. Did you ever present me the option to sign an accommodation letter via a meeting with you and Mr. Wiley? Mr. Wiley and I and you met. Okay. Prior to this day, hold, correct? Hold on, hold on. He's still answering. But I did not present you and tell you that you had to sign an accommodation letter. Okay. Evidence might say otherwise. My question is, the day this letter was presented to me, and it's dated New Year's Eve, I'm pretty sure there's a memorable day for you. Did you not summon me and deliver this letter with me to me with Mr. Wiley. Can I read this? Read it. Okay. 
Okay. And your question is? Did you present this letter to me on New Year's Eve of 2019 with Mr. Wiley? Alonzo presented the letter and I was present. And you was present? So Correct. you were there? Yes. Okay. Did you get me from the break room yourself or did Mr. Wiley get me from the break room? I do not recall who got you. You do not recall. Okay. But prior to this, you also presented me an accommodation letter, correct? I don't recall me personally presenting you an accommodation letter. With Mr. Wiley. Let the record reflect that. I believe maybe a couple of minutes ago you just submitted to it, but now he doesn't remember. Okay. With this being said and done, what was my options to continue as an employee presented in this letter? It specifically says here, you will have an unlimited ability to submit unlimited job bids in order to secure a position. Failure to secure a position for which you are qualified within 90 days will be considered a voluntary resignation. Okay. Did I resign? No. Okay. Did I apply for any jobs? during that indefinite period? I don't know. You don't know? No. At all? No. Okay. Can we proceed to exhibit four? Take a look at this, please. Can I see that? Okay. <clears throat> during that 90 day period, do you see your application reflected that day? Your question is? Was there an application during that 90 day period? This doesn't have anybody's name on here and it doesn't look like it has any. At the top of it, it says my application is correct? It doesn't have a name or an employee number. Okay. So. You see the dates, correct? You see the dates? I can see the dates over here. Okay. Matter of fact, I want to skip that one. Let's go here. Uh, can we go to exhibit five now? Thank you. All right. Can you take a look at that, please? Let me see it first. on the letter, please? March 26th, 2020. And what does that last sentence say? Should you believe you are being retaliated against or should you have any other concerns, please report them immediately to a member of management, your human resource advisor, or a human resource compliance group. Okay. Who could that be? objective form, are you asking him specifically who your contact was or for the whole company? It says group, so that's more than one person, correct? Okay, so you're asking about who the human exactly. compliance group is? Okay. Okay, it didn't say do not contact them, correct? Hold, hold on. The question is, do you know what the human compliance group is? I don't know him by that name, no. Okay. But it, it, you, you see right there it's saying to contact the African service of retaliation, correct? That's a direction, correct? I see that written there. Okay, and that date is what? March 26, 2020. Okay, and there was a potential violation that Alonzo Wiley suspected on April 30th of 2020 that you said he did without, but earlier you said it was HR that said it to send it, correct? Objective form, if you understand the question, you can answer. I don't understand the question. You don't understand the question. That's fine. Just one moment. Uh, can I proceed to exhibit six, please? 
Would you like to read this, please? Here, let me see it first. Okay, what's your understanding of this statement? It's Shane Dumas's statement. Okay. When they say intimidating McDavid or Yekwe with the top side loader, how tall does that loader get in the air? I don't know the exact height. Is it pretty high, pretty low? Okay. What? It's high. Okay. Do you agree you should be telling someone how fast to go? On a loader? I don't understand the question. You previously admitted you have no experience ever on a topside loader, correct? I have not driven a topside loader. Exactly. But you are accused not only by myself, but another person of intimidating someone on a topside loader while that work to go faster and we could check the weather reports of those days whether it was rainy wet or cold how far is the loader usually from the plane before it's mated four to six inches before it's mated not when it's mated before it could be anywhere huh? on gate seven it's usually at the fingers correct yes Exactly. Four gate seven, correct? Correct. Okay. Is that like 20, 30 feet? Approximately. Okay. Is there a need of speed there if it's less than 46 inches from the fingers? Would that console a letter if I was to hit the fingers? I'm not understanding your if question. If I were driving the top side loader and it touches the fingers, that would be considered an accident, correct? No. Previously, I was told different otherwise, but what would be considered an accident with a topside loader? Can you give me an example, please? Striking an aircraft. Okay. That striking, might have aircraft. striking another hold on, piece. Hold on, hold on. He's answering. Go ahead. Striking another piece of equipment. Uh -huh. Okay. Striking a person. Correct. Have I done anything like that? Not that I'm aware of. Have any other employees done something like that? We have had employees you hit an aircraft with a loader. We've had them hit light, lights and generators with it, yes. 
Have any of those other employees got a leave of absence regarding that action? Object to form, answer if you know. There's no time scope restriction, so. Okay, within my tenure or even after my tenure? Uh, same objection, answer if you know. That doesn't make sense, sir. I, I can make my record and object. You don't get to say. He can answer the question if he understands it. Go ahead. Okay. There have been people suspended pending investigation. Okay, but not leave of absence, correct? I don't recall how they were categorized. Okay, the leave of absence, it looks like it's only on one particular individual after he filed the IEEO complaint against you. This leave of absence, it looks like you didn't get an accident. You described all the types of ways you can get in trouble with a topside loader. I didn't meet any one of those. And I was in the air. Where's this height complaint of yours that you said I suppose it came to you about? Okay, I'm objecting to that as a statement. If the question, the question at the end was, if where did the height complaint come from? Yeah. You, answer the question if exactly. you understand it. Did you do any research before you came to a conclusion that this African American you don't know that complaint to other parties about you were confiding you about heights? How did you come to a conclusion? Did you research records of accidents of this particular individual come to a conclusion that he's in, he can't perform his job? Did you ignore the previous accidents of other employees? Where did you come with the conclusion of a leave of absence? Okay, objective form. I don't understand the question. If you do, you can answer it. The issue of height was brought to me by yourself and also written in an email to Ed Harvey, HR. Okay. Hold, hold, let him finish. Go ahead, Rick. Are you done? Uh, I can't remember the rest of the question. Could you read back what he was saying? Yeah, I can say it back. Okay. I, I need to hear what he had said because he had Any asked questions? a couple questions. Okay. Conclusion. Where did I come to the conclusion to a leave of absence? That was what concurrence of HCMP and HR, that was recommended by those individuals in regards to your inability to perform the essential functions of your job. What essential functions? Working at heights, operating a loader. You said you were uncomfortable being up on the grates. You had said that your weight was an issue, that it wasn't safe for you up there. You were afraid that you were going to fall out of the door, even though the door opens inward, not outward. Outward. When was this reported to you? I don't recall the specific date. You don't report this Did you ever report this to Human Resources? It's all in the records. No, did you? report this to human resources that's the question that you had these concerns yes what day you don't know. i don't recall you don't recall okay. i don't recall the specific date okay but at the same time you were aware that i was on that top side loader for at least six weeks straight with no incident correct i don't know how long you were up there okay so you never checked any records the objection that's not what he said but you can answer the question if my you question check is did he check any records to confirm his, uh, maybe he had a dream that a black man who was scared of and reported for harassment would confide in him on something that's totally not true. 
My question is to you. Okay. Did you ever, before you made that conclusion, ever check my safety record and compare it to others on there, specifically Caucasian employees? Okay, I'm going to object to the disrespectful notion of you stating he had a dream or whatever that was about. The last question uh, you can answer if you understand it. It was irrelevant to check any records after you brought the claim that you were unsafe and couldn't perform your duties as a material handler. After that point, there was no question as to whether allowing you to continue on in that position until we had resolved this using HCMP and HR. Okay, so when did you, this supposedly occurred to you on either December 4th or 5th, so it took you three, four weeks to go to conclusion to New Year's Eve? That's what you're saying with HCMP? I don't understand like your collusion. timeline. Like, y'all are just trying to make something up. That's my opinion, I guess. That's for the record. Do you know a Jeff Tobridge by any chance? The name is familiar, yes. Okay. Did he have more seniority than me? I don't know. You don't know? Do you know Brian Anthony? Yes. Did he have more seniority than me? I don't know. Did you know a Kipling Chappelle? Yes. Did he have more seniority than me? I don't know. You don't know? Do you know the races of all those people mentioned? Objective form, if you remember the people he mentioned, you can answer, or if you know the races. Uh, we can go one by one if you like. I don't know the races of all of them. You don't. They were all Caucasian. And according to the statement by Mr. Dumas, they all received captain training, despite having less tenure than me. Almost by a prior year, probably. But long story short, not, well, not Brian Anthony. I think it was a month or two after me in terms of getting hired. They were all trained, and I believe they all had accidents on their record, not like me especially with a loader because I never got an accident with a loader. So your criteria with no documentation was to put leave of accident solely for McDavid or Yekwe, not for any other employee. You just did investigative suspensions, but McDavid or Yekwe, you did the 90-day leave of absence. Okay, object, object to the questions, argumentative and confusing. If you understand what he's asking, you can answer. I don't. Yep. All right. Was there anything untrue that Mr. Uh, Dumas said in the statement that you briefly read? Can I see it again, please? Okay, and your question was? Is there any statements you believe Mr. Dumas said that were false? Yes. Which ones? Many of them. Which ones? It's called one by one. <laughs> it states here that there were several issues of discrimination confirmed happened to McDavid Oweke. I disagree with that. Okay. First question, the break room, did you Should I go through the rest of the list? No, 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 it's his, okay. <laughs> you okay. move on, you're done. The break room, did you stop group references in the break room since there was a high concentration of African Americans doing it every, after every shift? No. You did not? No. So that plane, you never heard of a complaint filed against you regarding that? No. That you canceled a group brunch since it was African American based? No. Okay. PSTs, can you elaborate what PSTs are? Primary, secondary, and tertiary checks. Uh -huh. What is primary? That's usually the first person to go. Okay. What's the S? Secondary. That would be the second person to and go. What do they do? What do they do? They check a particular area to make sure that there's no packages, containers, or other liabilities for FedEx in that area. Up to how many containers? 
I don't think there's a defined limit on it. Exactly. So if you give an estimate of range, there's not a defined limit on it. There's not a defined limit. So could it be, say, two, three hundred cans? Objection, That's a check. Objection asked and answered. Go ahead. Answer. Yeah, you could. It'd be highly unlikely. Highly unlikely. But you can't give an estimate. So is three hundred a good estimate or no? Object to form. Go ahead. It's whatever containers are in that defined area. Defined area. Okay. What does the T do? They do the final check of that area. Okay. What else do they have to do that's different from the P and the S? Each PST is different. You'd have to cite the specific PST to tell you exactly what the closeout procedure is. So you're saying there's different PSTs? Yes. There's okay. many different PSTs at the ramp. Okay. Uh, I'm not familiar with that answer. I believe there was just one primary checks up to 300 cans or so, the S checks up to 300 cans or so, and the T checks up to 300 cans or so, but the T has to close all those cans, usually by themselves, correct? Or are you not familiar with that? I'm familiar with that, but my understanding is that other employees were supposed to help with the closing of the containers after their operation. After operation? Mm hmm Okay. Did other employees help with that? I don't know. Okay. So... You, for you not to know, that means you weren't on the ramp, correct? Not at that time, observing those PSTs, no. All right, thank you. Okay. Did you ever review complaints against you about discrimination and favoritism with Julie Hughes? Did you ever see any complaints outside of myself regarding that? I had been asked about IEEOs, but I have never reviewed employees' complaints against me. Okay. Gotcha. Did you wish a white female look for a ramp manager position? You there? I'm just waiting to hear the end of your question. If they're... I believe... I forgot his name. I forgot his name. Do you remember his name? The ramp manager? You had a heavy accent? You don't remember his name? He's pretty tall? Dang, I forgot his name. He left, he left uh, probably around November of 2019. Do you remember his name? He, so his position came open for a ramp manager. I think he was the third or fourth one. On which shift? On the AM shift. His position came open and it looks like there are two African Americans that applied for the job with a great deal of experience. And a Victoria Banks, I believe, interviewed for the position too? I don't, I'm sorry. The question is? Did you wish her good luck in her interview? I don't believe Victoria's last name is Banks. It's I can't. No. Hold e A R P. He can't talk. He can't talk over him. Let him finish. Are you done? No. Okay. Go ahead. Say what you're saying. I don't believe Victoria's name is Banks. I don't recall it off the top of my head right now. But Victoria was an A man, uh, candidate. And yes, I did wish her good luck. Did you wish the African-Americans luck? I don't know who else applied for that position. Okay. So you had no decision making who got that position? It wasn't my position posted. It wasn't your position, so that position wasn't under you? No. So you didn't go to that position? Did she recently break her, not recently, eventually break her arm on Gate 7? Whom? Victoria. Yes. She did. As a ramp manager, correct? I don't think she was a ramp manager at the time. She's never been a ramp manager at DFW. Okay, maybe I got it backwards. My apologies. But long story short, you did wish somebody luck. You made it, but not the African Americans. You didn't know them at the time, correct? I don't know who else applied for it. Okay. Everybody that has applied for any position that I'm aware of, I always wish them luck. Whether they're white or black? Correct. Okay. So tell me one black person you ever wish good luck, good luck to on the application. Tierra. Tierra? For what position? Manager position. What manager position? She's putting in for one for Houston. Oh, just now? Yes. Okay. And That's the first one? To finish answering your question, mm -hmm. also uh, uh, Joseph put in for a position in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Wished him luck also. Mm-hmm. He got the job. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Thank you. And this is all after my termination, correct? There were probably people before your termination, too. But you can't remember their names, can you? But you remember Victoria's, don't you? Well, excuse me. Are you are you trying to insinuate I'm that just he asking only... a question, sir. Well, Thank that's you. ridiculous. I don't want to hear. you. That's abusive, what you're all doing right, all right, right sir, now. sir, you can object, but please don't try to threaten me. Okay. I'm not threatening you. I'm I feel telling like you're you, threatening me. you, you are just not, to your you are not, towards me. you are not, not going. Are you trying to intimidate me? You Please are not. I'll let each other speak oh, oh. one at a time. You are not finish. going to abuse and harass this witness by suggesting he's a racist because he can't remember the names of all African Americans or other minorities whom he's wished luck to. You've asked your question. You're I'm going asking to move questions. On. You can decide what you think it is, but please don't try to intimidate me. Are you intimidated? I'm I are feel like if you're leaning your seat like that, are you trying to stare me down? No, I'm just I curious. feel like you're trying to be hostile towards me. Are you intimidated? Did, it, did, I, did I lean t towards you? Did I point at you? Are you intimidated? Did I lean towards you? <laughs> okay, we can move. Thank on. you. All right. I haven't finished answering. Yeah, go ahead. Finish it. And before your time, Brandy, who put in for several positions, was previously worked for me, put in for another position at FWH, got that permission promotion. She also put in for another position at another location uh, as a recruiter. She got that position. Um, uh, Stacy Bills put in for a senior manager position. Is this anybody I know? You asked me people who were minorities Let that him I offered good lucks to. You finish your answer. Go ahead. Um, Sort of got thrown off track yep. here, but there have been plenty. Mm. Alonzo Wiley, when he put in for the position at the ramp, mm. I offered him good luck. Mm. You did. Okay. Again, based on your tenure, have you ever been disciplined for any misconduct as an employee of FedEx? Can you repeat the question? As an employee of FedEx, you said you started in 1989, correct? Yes. Have you ever been disciplined for misconduct as an employee? Yes. Okay, when's the last time? I'm not sure the exact date, but it's approximately 20 years ago. 20 years ago? Yes. So in the last 24 months, you have not been disciplined, suspended for any remote misconduct? No. Or violation of workplace policies? No. At all? No. Okay. And for the record, you disagree with Mr. Uh, Dumas' statement of, about you regarding his statement over here, correct? Yes. Of the Bravo Zulu. But he did, he was correct in saying that Brandon Granny did get the Bravo Zulu Award for 2020 or 2019 or both. I don't understand. Brandon Granny, you say he got multiple Bravo Zulus earlier? I didn't know what years he got it for. I don't know what years he got them. Okay. Gotcha. Bravo Zulus are given out monthly. Okay. Gotcha. That's good to know. Can you take a look at Zip 7, please? He hit to me. Okay. You know what that is? Yes. What is it? It's a letter informing you that your warning letter and termination on May 1st were upheld by the appeals board. Okay. But it does acknowledge there's an IEO complaint, correct? I don't see IEO there. Internal complaint? Oh, right, right. Thank you. Exhibit 8, if you could take a look at this, please.
questions? Do you recognize it? I recognize it. Okay, did you draft it? I may have uh, participated in it, but I didn't. What capacity? Correcting references to misspelling or format. Do you do that all the time or yes. just one time thing? On all letters. On all letters. Can you repeat that? Jay has us look at all letters. We review all of them. Before they give it to the employee? Yes. So, is that policy from day one or not? I don't recall if it's from day one with Jay or not. Okay, that's important because on the previous ones, you said it was Alonzo Wiley. You couldn't stipulate the day that you knew about the notice on exhibit one, which was given on April 30th. Less than 24 hours of reported aircraft strike. You said you proofread it, and that day is May the 8th. It's less than a month ago. Objective form, I don't understand the My question. My question is, is he telling the truth or not about a previous answer? Okay. He said he didn't tell me what day he became knowledgeable about this, but he says he proofreads every letter in his previous statement. Okay. You can answer the question if you understand. To answer your question, what you're showing there is not a letter of discipline. It is an investigative suspension. They are different than formal letters of discipline. A formal letter of discipline. So how many letters of discipline did I get? It says here that you received this would be your third. How would it be my third letter? What is the date on that letter? On this letter? Yes. This says May 8th, 2020. It was sent to you, but... It, this is the decision rationale. One moment. Let me read through and find it. And I'm sorry, what's the question? You're interrupting your own witness. No, no, I mean, I, did, I don't understand the question. What was the question? Can we read, well, Mr. French, I don't think he likes to hear from people like me. <clears throat> He's answered the question, the date is May 8th, 2020. That's the question. Okay, go ahead. That's not three letters. Okay, what's your question? It takes three letters for a termination, correct? Yes. Unless there's workplace violence or something like that? Unless there's other mitigating circumstances, yes. Okay, what are the mitigating circumstances? Because I only see two letters, not three. What's the question? I only had two letters, okay. or technically one. This would have been the second one if it was legitimate, but you're saying it's a third letter. Just for correction, this is a management decision rationale given to you after you had been issued the third letter and you were terminated. What third letter? What third letter did I get? It states here, you received your first letter on 4-24-19, a warning letter for a drop container. 10-10-2019, a performance reminder decision day for unsatisfactory, unsatisfactory punctuality. And the final letter on 4-30-2020 for insubordination. So 4-30, this is a letter. You said official letters, correct? This is a letter. This is a disciplinary letter. Exhibit one, right? This is a disciplinary letter, correct? This says investigative suspension with pay. You just said I got a letter on 430. The only thing I got on 430 was this. In the guard shack and I was sent home. This is the same letter that you said previously you proofread, but this one you didn't proofread and you don't know when it was decided to give me this. And all that, you said this came from HR, I think you said, 
or previously or something like that. What's the? I just need the truth, please. You I said that I got a letter I, on four thirty. There's no question. Do not answer. What anything. letter did I receive on four thirty? Right, that's my question. Go ahead. According to this, on 430, it says you received the warning letter for insubordination. Okay, I did not receive a letter on 430. If that's if it's true that I never received a letter on 430, what, how is that going to be corrected? Uh, object, objection to form. Uh, I, I don't, how is what going to be corrected? You can if, that's a, if that's a false statement, what would you do if that was a false statement? Object to form. You can answer, I guess, you can speculate as to what you would do if you heard a false statement. I'd correct the date. Correct the date? So what date is it? Because I, I don't know the date you were issued your warning letter, but you were issued a third letter and terminated. On, on, on the 30th. So the investigative pay, I never got the suspension with pay then. I was terminated on this day, but it says suspension with pay. And previous your statement said this wasn't a warning letter. That is not a warning letter. But you said, this is all I received that day. And plus, you would be CC'd on it, so you would know when I would get one. Did the Hossel Wiley not CC on every letter he gave to me? Uh, objection, Miss Stacy's never said that's the only letter you got on 430. Did, uh, the question now is, did Alonzo Wiley CC you on everything? I don't know if he CC'd me on everything. Okay, so let the record state, this is the only 430 letter I got. Mr. Mogus is admitted on the oath that this is not a letter, but the letter he read says I got a letter on 430, which is more than 12 calendar months from April 24th that he previously disclosed by reading the May 8th letter. That's over a year. But this right here is not a letter, and this is all I got on 430. You weren't there. That's the truth on 430. I see this in the guard check. It was Alonzo Wiley, and I believe the download manager, Thomas. You weren't there that day. But your name is CC'd here, so you were noticed about this. We haven't got down to what proofreading you did on this or what you told Alonzo to do on this on Exhibit 1. But we need to get to the bottom of where is that letter. Because if it's a letter I was terminated this day, I can't get terminated suspended with pay the same day. So obviously, that's an inconsistency. Mr. Oyekwe, I'm going to state on the record that you're obviously misstating the truth. You have been provided with your May 1st, 2020 termination letter. You've also May 1st? Been, you've also been provided You said with, May 1st, or did I say May 30th? Hold on. Let me make my record because you're, you're, you're saying things that are not true, and you know them to not be true. Your termination letter has been previously provided to you, which was dated May 1st of 2020. Um, I will give you the Bates number right now uh, that has been previously provided to you. And then also, you've been provided with the leave of absence policy, which you know specifically states that when you are on leave of absence, any letters that are pending are deferred for that period of time and do not count against the year. The Bates number for your termination letter is OSHA investigation file 034 and 033. Do you want me to give you the personal leave of absence policy Bates number? I need all of that because I never see that. The letter here that says by Mr. Morgan says April 30th. Now he's saying May 1st. His attorney is correcting another misinformation lie. Okay. That's not me. Now, this is created by them, not me. Okay. I'm just reading out another lie that I just exposed. Okay, so I'm going to email you the what we previously provided mm -hmm. with the personal leave of absence policy and the termination letter. If, if at this point the question has been answered, but due to your misstatements on the record, I feel the need to correct what has been provided. So you can continue. I do feel the need to correct that Mr. French is actually lying and committed his own type of perjury, expecting some type of privilege to be giving, I guess, a pass for lying. Okay. Mr. Mogus previously said April 30th. He never said May the 1st. Mr. French interrupted Mr. Mogus to state May the 1st. And I believe the suspension with pay was at least a week, so the 8th doesn't make sense if I was terminated on the 1st. Well, yeah, but anyway, to make the long story short, there's a lot of inconsistencies. I just suppose a couple lies by the defense, and ultimately, we li I'd like to go start with the insubordination uh, questioning, if I can, may. What proof of insubordination do you have? Your own actions. My actions? Okay. How? 
Do you know the definition of subordination? Yes. What is it in, under your, in your opinion? Insubordination is to follow a, a person's directive as long as it's within policy, safe, and not, uh, uh, what's the other word I'm looking for? Not immoral. Not immoral. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Immoral. An email is not safe, you're saying? A G GFP is not safe? And uh, following directions of previous exhibits given to you to contact the HR group, that's not in compliance? Object to form, uh, compound question. Was anybody told till Mr. McDavid Oyekwe not to email them? Was he told by anybody, do not email me? Are you asking me? Yes. I don't know your interaction with everybody else, but I, I was advised on, that you had been told in that meeting between you, Julie, and Jay that you were to stop abusing the GFTP system and open door uh, policy. Was I told not to follow GTFP? Were you there? I was not present. Okay. So, is that considered speculation? Objection calls for legal conclusion. He can't answer that question. Huh? He can't. He can't answer. He can't answer speculation. that question because he wasn't there. Correct. So he he made a determination of insubordination off of your say. You you asked him if what he knew about what was said. Exactly. And he made determination with no proof. Uh, okay. What's your next question? My next question is, you made that entire decision off of a private conversation with Julie. And Jay at the same time, or privately, with, with one of them? Object to form. He said he made his decision off of that. I need to get clarity. Object to form. I don't understand the question. If you do, you can try He said he decided that he's insubordinated. Hold on. Okay. All right, go ahead. What did you say, Rick? Sorry. I do not understand what decision you're referring to. You said that. Oh, can I talk? Can I talk now? You previously stated that you decided that I commit insubordination from your conversation with Julie, but I don't know if Jay was involved, I don't know where this meeting happened, and you were to have some type of direction, I, I think there needs to be a, a letter or something that in writing, because the writing, letters and writing I have from you, and especially Julie, contradict that entire statement. They're directing me to go to HR. Your statement is saying they told me not to. That sounds like this is not adding up. Objective form, the state's testimony and evidence. Who told you specifically, or did they both tell you that? Did they instruct you to tell me that, not to go to HR? And what day? Objective form, multiple questions. He's asking you, did, well, I, don't, I can't remember what you asked, so. So which one do we want to go to first? Just ask one question. That's. He, he's just being positive. I mean, you've got to stop interrupting your own witness. But I, I'll ask again. Who told you they told me not to and when? Or do, or do you need to, it's a Halloween question. <laughs> Object to form, you can answer if you understand. I don't know the specific dates I was formed, mm -hmm. but I know it was after your meeting with them that you were to cease and desist your continued abuse of the GFTP system. Cease and desist? Yes. Does that require a letter? I have no idea if they gave you a letter, exactly. what your conversation was with them, or if they documented it with you. You just said you have no idea, but you previously said you had an idea. You made that determination on whatever day, or Mr. Wiley made that determination. Okay, uh, uh, object to form. I don't understand the question. If you do, you can, you can respond. Because, oh, I don't know if I can speak. I don't want to interrupt, sorry. Uh, maybe I got a little too excited. Rick, you can answer if you understand the question. I, I don't understand the question. In your previous statements, you said Alonzo Wiley did this independent of himself on April 30th. Did which? Exhibit one. The investigative suspension. Yes, Alonzo Wiley did that. But you're saying you concluded that I was insubordinate. There was no conclusion. That is a document stating that you were being suspended pending a possible violation of policy. Okay. There is no conclusion in that document. 
There's no conclusion in this document. Previously, you said in this document, it says April 30th, I was given a letter of termination on April 30th, correct? That's what it shows here. Where your attorney interrupted and said it was May the 1st, correct? He made a correction, yes. Okay. With that being said, the insubordination part, you concluded that, not Mr. Wiley. Who concluded the insubordination? You or Mr. Wiley or Julie or Jay? That's the question. It was concluded by upper management with the concern, concurrence of HR and legal due to your filing two more GFTPs after you were told not to. Hmm. There's a specific person or not a specific person? I don't know the specific names that were involved. It was beyond my, my scope. It was beyond your scope? Yes, sir. But who do you report directly to? Julie Hughes. So she didn't give you a direct order? In regards to what? Insubordination termination. I'm not sure I understand what you're asking. When you're given an order, you follow them, correct? Generally, yes. Exactly. Did Julie Hughes give you an order to do the termination letter or not? I do not recall whether it was Julie or HR that informed us. Who other HR did you speak to? Hold on, let him finish. I do not recall if it was Julie or HR that informed us that you were going to be terminated for your abuse of the GFTP system under 2-5 acceptable conduct. Mm -hmm. Was that Laura Cardenas? I said I do not recall. You do not recall. So you do not recall who gave you the order? So, if you can't recall, is there a chance you may be per was given the order? No. Okay, but you, you remember that you were given the order, and you passed it down to whom? Alonzo executed the letter. Okay, he did execute the letter. Mm -hmm. So you knew beforehand? Yes. Okay, what date? I don't recall the date. You don't recall the date. All right, thank you. Uh, can you proceed to exhibit uh, 9, please? I need to use the restroom after this question, please. Okay. It's t almost 12.15. 12.15. Okay. Can we do a little break? I guess? Call for here. Okay, we're going off record at 12.12 12 p.m. We are going back on record at 12.19 p.m. All right. Oh, what is the video you looking at? Oh, yeah. I've looked at it. Okay. Exhibit 9. Okay, what do you see? A printout from the PATH system. What date? Friday, April 24th, 2020. Okay. Is there anything wrong there? In regards to? Attendance, punctuality. Yes, you're below the minimal acceptable level on punctuality. By how many percent? Four tenths of a percent. Four tenths of a percent? Yes, sir. What was the average for the ramp? I do not know the ramp average. Was it good, bad, satisfactory? Majority or good. Majority? Of those bad, did they get a letter or not? The employees that are below the acceptable level are, are given different levels of discipline based on where they are in the process. Exactly. But it's not consistent to be one set. And there was GTFPs for, uh, uh, of, uh, completed addressing that? The double standards or, you know, possible discrimination in the way of attendance being recorded? I'm not sure what your question Did is. Did you have any issues with GFT, GTFPs we reported about attendance being unfairly assigned in terms of they said I was five minutes late, but this person was 10 minutes late, it's not showing on the record, et cetera. Are we talking about attendance or punctuality? What you attendance just described as punctuality. punctuality. But mainly attendance being late. There's only two timing clocks, correct? And there's about 300 employees per shift. Okay, I'm going to try and answer all your questions the best that I can remember. Okay. Attendance is different than punctuality. Being late is punctuality. Attendance is being absence. Okay. There are two time clocks in, in the ramp, and I don't recall what your third question was. Do they always work at 
the same time. I don't understand what, what you're asking. Do the two time clocks always work both at the same time? Do they ever have the wrong time? I'm not aware of that they do. Huh? Has I'm not aware that they do. Have this ever been reported to you that that's an issue? There has been occasion, yes. Okay. Also, with that being said and done, was there a grace period during the COVID situation about tardies? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Also, let's see, can I take this? Thank you. Okay. Was this actually not mine? You already admitted that there was different ways that it was addressed, so I'll leave it at that. But you were aware there was people that had issues the way attendance was being recorded by your team and your management, correct? I'm sorry, the question. You were familiar that people had issues the way attendance was being recorded by your team and management. How some people get signed off to change their time or not. Correct? Actually, how many people work per shift? Just an estimate in the AM. Approximately 125 to 140. 125 to 140. And they can all be rushing two stamping clocks, correct? In a line, correct? Not all start at the same times. Huh? Not all start at the same times? No. But majority do at certain times, correct? No. Okay. Ramp team. How, how, how big is the ramp team? Approximately 40 people. 40 people and they start at a specific time? Not all of them start at the same time. So it's staggered how many different times? I'm sorry? The ramp team's 30, 40 people. Who's the other people? Well, you have the team leads. Mm -hmm. You have the gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. You have... Uh, the ramp team has different start times depending on whether they work postal or that they are just out on the ramp. Exactly. You have the ramp agents, you have uh, the truckload setup people, uh, the TCAs, and then you have the sort employees. Okay. The ramp team is about 40 BBC previously, correct? That's including all ramp agents and, and material handlers. So about 100 people in the warehouse. Uh, preload, unload, all that, they work on the same start time? No. All right, what time does they work at? Objective form, he can't possibly answer for every, you're talking about all 40 people? It's a work group. We'll pass the 40 group to the other. 40, he said about 125 to 140. So you want him to answer for all 125 people when their start times are? No, you're, I think you're putting in misinformation. I actually asked them to divide the group into the, what groups they are. The ramp team is separate of those groups. Those are people outside the warehouse. There's people inside the warehouse. They usually have the same start time. I'm just trying to get that to, that, that answer and how they get to clock in. Do they only clock in through two stamps, time stamps, that sometimes don't work? That's the question. Okay, and you can answer the question if you understand it. The inside sort people are roughly 85 employees, but not all 85 start at the same time. Thank you. Was that difficult to answer for you? Now that you actually posed the question, no. All right, thank you. Also, with that being said, was there a previous GTFP file that I didn't get a start time posted, like my, my start time wasn't posted on the sheet, one that I was allowed back on April, March 26th. Was there a GTFP that I wasn't given a start time? I don't recall if, if there was a GFTP regarding that. Mm -hmm. I recall an incident where you weren't on the schedule because you returned after the schedule was already posted. Okay, perhaps maybe a couple weeks after that. But uh, I just want that on the record. Can we proceed to Exhibit 10, please?
Okay. Do you know what that is? I'm not exactly sure what it is. Do you know what the hot, uh, workplace fire hotline number is? Yes. Okay. That's it, reporting the ads in it. I'll, I'll move to exhibit uh, 11. Take a look at that. Recognize that? It's part of some kind of report. Okay. All right. It's also from the same uh, work as uh, I can take this back. It's okay. yours. Thank you. All right. And just to confirm, you've never been suspended as an employee of FedEx in the last 24 months for misconduct. You've never been suspended with pay or without pay? No. Okay. Again, you've never been suspended with pay or without pay for misconduct as a FedEx employee in the last 24 months. I have never been suspended from FedEx in my entire career at FedEx. Okay, thank you. I'd like to proceed to exhibit 12. termination were you absent from the office for any reason I don't understand when Shane Dumas was terminated from FedEx were you away from the office for any particular reason I don't recall where I was you don't recall where you were but you definitely weren't suspended no okay or any other any disciplinary action I have not been suspended or received disciplinary action in the last 24 months from FedEx. Okay, 36 months. 36 months too. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Oyekwe, have you previously provided these documents to FedEx? Yes, multiple occasions. And when when are those occasions? Uh, I can forward you an email, I believe it's in my first five exhibits. That, oh, okay, the first five exhibits you sent us in I this think, case. but I've sent it to you for sure. Okay. So are you saying this is your first time ever seeing this? Uh, I'm not familiar with those documents. Okay. It was from Lenore during her dispute with you, and I'd like to review it, if that's okay. That's fine. I, I just I was just curious when you would turn those over. Okay. It was from the beginning. I wouldn't have known about the mechanic checking out the plane if it wasn't for that statement, because it was never providing me, like, the mechanic statement, et cetera, that... You said you don't have, but uh, Mr. Uh, Mulgan says y'all do have it. No, I'm not, I'm not saying I don't. What, I'm sorry, say that again. You remember earlier in our conversation, he said that the mechanic does their own statement, 
and you say you forward everything after me, yeah. he says I'm carrying this statement, and that Alonzo White didn't do an ADR. So uh, it makes sense not to have ADR, you know, they're trying to conceal it, but if I'm carrying this statement, I should have received that statement, but I never got that statement. Okay, here, here they are. I have seen these before. All right, go ahead. Thank you. You take a look at it. They're out of order, so I'm just trying to make it make sense. I'm not sure of how all these go together because they're not numbered. And it looks like some of them are out of order as to what they go with. Well, it looks like training records at the back, doesn't it? Now this is a receipt for something. Uh, <laughs> These also look to be incomplete. They don't have 
everything on the same page. They're on multiple pages, so they may be distorted. Uh -huh. What do they look like to you? It looks like training records, but they they weren't put on the page as each sheet. The sheets are split. Okay. Do you have any record of me failing any training? Not to my knowledge. Lenore? Okay. Not to my knowledge. Okay. All right, there's some accusations you made that I'd like to go over with you, if you don't mind. Can I get that? Thank you. All right. It looks like she has the same uh, complaint about employees being hired after getting training before. Is that true that she herself made that complaint to management about you? It says that she made the complaint, yes. Okay. She was left out of programs because of captain training, but she did eventually get captain training in April of 2020, right before her supposed investigation for termination, correct? I'm not sure what your specific question is. Number 10 on the first page says, complaint alleges Taylor Hall, employee number 3884596, had an accident in April of 2020. It doesn't say 2020 there. Didn't report it and should have two letters. Also alleges that uh, Taylor Hall has attendance issues. But long story short, she was terminated for an accident on the ramp, correct? Who are we talking about? Lenore Unifer. Okay, and the question being? Was she at fault for the accident that occurred in April 2020? Which accident are you referring to? It's an accident right here. And that investigation was much longer than my reported aircraft strike. I this says Tyler Hall. It doesn't say Lenore. Yeah, but she was terminated for it. I believe it's Tyler Hall assigned to it, and she took over for her right when they, they go, a uh, oversized fell on the floor. It was ultimately picked up resolved, but it didn't go to Tyler. It went to her as a letter. I think that was investigated for about a month or so in between encompassing my whole retaliation on the uh, air force, air, aircraft strike. Was she terminated because of an accident or not, basically? I'm not sure who you're talking about anymore. You've okay, mentioned this several thing, different this names. Thing right here. Hold on. Hold, he's still talking. Just let him finish. All right. You done? Yes. Okay. Okay, we're talking about Lenore. Okay. You recall her, correct? Yes. She was ultimately terminated in May or April of 2020. I don't recall the date. You don't recall the date? No. Do you recall what she was terminated for? I don't remember specifically. It was either a container drop or an accident. Exactly. But you remember it was, it, it was some type of incident where she was put at fault, correct? Correct. Okay, it looks like she's accusing the other person, Tyler Hall, who she replaced. It looks like it also took quite a bit of time for y'all to decide who, what to do with the situation. And this was on top of my situation in between. Because it says April here, I'm pretty sure she was let go in May. Correct? Ob object to form. You can answer the last question on the table. Okay. What's the last question? I guess if she was terminated in May? I don't know the exact day or month she was terminated in. Okay. Well, can you read number three? Especially the end. Policy does not dictate management select employees to be trained based on continuous service. Training is conducted at the availability of the trainer, the employee being trained, and the business needs of the operation. Load captains do not get additional monetary incentives for this responsibility. Load captains are responsible for the proper load of the aircraft along with safety and security of the aircraft. Less than 50% of the aircraft crew is load captain trained, and this position is usually designated to an employee who possesses leadership qualities, exceptional safety performance and record, as well as exceptional GSE proficiency. Complainant does not have an exceptional safety record. Their training for the 
Their training for the captain position was delayed due to the driver's license issue, C number one, and serious vehicle accidents on the route that occurred on 10 17 2019. Additionally, the Clayton fell behind peers regarding GSE training and operating GSE equipment or safety procedures requiring additional training and coaching to help the complainant become proficient at the training management, I'm sorry, proficient at the training already taken. After considerable coaching by ramp agents, peers, and management, complainant was kept and trained on 4-19-2020. 419, correct? So she was kept and trained, correct? It says so at 419 2020. So you're not disputing that, correct? It looks like her date of hire on the first page says June 17th of 2019, correct? I don't recall. Right there. Yes, it says 617 2019. Okay. My date of hire was January 19th of 2019, correct? Thank you. Uh, reflect uh, Lenore's race for the uh, record, please. Caucasian. All right. Thank you. Did McDavid ever have a suspended license? I don't know. Okay. Did Did McDavid ever hit a gas truck, a parked gas truck, as employee of FedEx? Not that I'm aware of. All right. Thank you. All right, you read number 11. There was an aircraft strike reported and it was investigated. Investigation entailed statements from the accused John Peterson, a statement from the marshaler Ruth Pontemayor, Chris Barnes, topside load captain, on-site aircraft technician Jeff Hayward, as well as viewing the video footage of the mating process. Investigation included that there was no aircraft strike. Okay. So Jeff Hayward, correct? Correct. All right. It was investigated. You're saying the same day, right? I assume so. You assume so. Were these findings ever given to the person who reported the aircraft strike? They never would be. They never would be. So if I report something, just don't follow me, nothing. Just stay in the dark about it, just get suspended and terminated about it? Objection, argumentative. You don't have to answer that. The question is, was there any remote follow-up regarding the accident for clarity or clarification to see if there's a miscommunication in the statement given or the alert or the allegation, just to clarify, there was no effort to get a clarity on it after it was reported? Object to form. I don't understand the question. You can answer if you do. I'm not sure what you're asking. The accident was reported on April 29th of 2020. There was no follow-up for clarity and there was no follow-up just to find out if there was a miscommunication of the allegation, correct? No, that is not correct. There was a follow-up? Yes, there was. What date? There was a follow-up investigation with all four employees that witnessed it. You yourself gave a statement. The mechanic observed the aircraft and video footage was reviewed by myself and Alonzo Wiley. And I, um, I'm not sure who else by now has viewed that video. You that video where you say you saw me in front of the plane, about 20 feet in front of the plane. I saw you in that video walk in front of the aircraft. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Again, for the record, the video I was showed at AFW doesn't have me walking in front of the aircraft. That was showed by Mr. French that you set up. But again, uh, there was no follow up, 11, in my opinion. Or I guess we'll have to dispute that later on. But uh, it is J Jeff Hayward that you previously stated that did do a statement regarding his findings, correct? He wrote an email to us that there was nothing on the aircraft. He, an email? Yes. The day of or the day after? I'm not sure. Just an email. He didn't do no paperwork? No. Didn't put anything in the flight log or anything like that? That's good to know. Thank you.
if you can, if I can get a copy of that email. You got a copy of it, and I'll give you the um, I'll give you the baits right now because I'm 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 looking at it right now. Let's see. Um, The, aim, the email was sent on April 29th at 2020 at 1023 a.m. It was sent to Rick Miglins. It states, Aircraft 394 Gate 5, inspected area where crew stairs made fuselage, found no damage from current issue present. And it's OSHA investigation file 030 is the Bates number. Can I get a screenshot of that email to me, please? And uh, you said 1030, uh, 1030 that day? 10:23 a.m. Okay, and you. it was in response to an email that Mr. Miglin sent at 7:20 a.m. saying, "Jeff, can you recap our conversation this morning in Gate Five on your observations as to the crew stairs versus the AC?" Thank you. Thank you. And uh, did you provide a copy of Ruthie Baltimore's statement, Chris Barnes' statement, and also Chris Peterson's statement? Yes. Do you oh, want me to give you the, the Bates number for that? Or if you could just email me the actual file, that would be greatly appreciated. Yes, I will email those to you. All right. There's an accident reported about uh, Maxi Newman with the topside loader where it got stuck, I believe, what do they call it, the shuttle bay? I believe I read here that it said it wasn't an accident, that she didn't hit anything. Are you, are you, is this in any way she didn't run over the shuttle bay, the incline, to where they had to use a forklift to remove it? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Let's see if I can find it. Let's Can I get the time, please? It's 12.49. We're at 2 hours and 45 minutes. All right, thank you so much. There's somebody's thumb drive on the floor. Or. Oh. oh. Never mind. All right, I just got a couple more questions. Can you explain to us who Laura Jewell is? I'm sorry, the name Laura again? Jewell, J E W E L L, I think. Laura Jewell. I believe she's a safety specialist. For who? For FedEx. For FedEx? Not DFW? No, she doesn't work just for DFW. I believe she's for the district or part of the region team. Okay. Did you consult her? regarding any safety issues regarding myself? I don't recall if I, if I did or I didn't. Okay, you don't recall if you did or you didn't. Do you think it would be warranted that you consult her before trying the leave of absence tactic or, you know, investigating the aircraft strike? Can you repeat the question again? It looks like she's... It looks like she was listed as the safety manager for DFW, even though I've never seen her before a day in my life. I tried contacting her reporting safety concerns, never got a response. Did you or did she ever inquire about my safety concerns with you or anything like that? I do not recall. You do not recall. Who's a Janelle Anstock? Who? A Janelle 
J O E L L E. Joelle. Yeah. Okay. She's also a safety specialist. Above, with, or like, is she a subordinate of Laura Drew or not? No, I believe she was Laura's replacement. Oh, she replaced Laura? I believe so. When? I don't recall the date. Okay. And also, the leave of absence, do you have all the dates that it was amended? I wouldn't have that. The policy? Uh, would your attorney have that, those dates that it was amended? I'm not sure what he would have. Mr. French? Yes, sir. Do you have the dates that the leave of absence policy was amended? Um, the leave of absence policy as provided to you. Yeah, but was it amended? Hold on just a second. The leave of absence policy provided to you was last revised on March 9th, 29th of 2018. And the version provided to you came from the February 16th, 2020 People Manual, which was in effect when you were terminated. The base numbers are HR Advisor File 041 through 042. Can I get a copy of that also? Yes. Also, were there any changes to the uh, insubordination or acceptable conduct policy? Were there any changes to that one? If I could get the data changes on that. Now, when you say changes, are you talking about after you were terminated? Before termination. Basically, like, after the situation, did it, did it happen like April 30th, they'll change it. It's like, all right, we're going to terminate So the, the version you, of the acceptable conduct policy you were provided had last been revised in... September 29th of 2019, and it was part of a July 12th, 2020 people manual. So it was the version in effect when you were terminated. The Bates or XEEO file 089 through 098. All right, can I get a copy of that also? All right. Exhibit 13, please. Oh. Okay. I can't really read it, but... Okay, what did you uh, find about this letter? Uh, I can only read that it's from Julie Hughes. It has FedEx Express at the top, and the rest of it's blurry. All right, do you know the date? I can't make out the date. In my opinion, it says November 4th of 2019. It may. It may? Okay. I can't see it. That letter is a confirmation of discriminatory findings that are reported to the IEEO, in my opinion. Shortly after there, somehow I got a leave of absence. And after leave of absence, you know what happened after that. Do you dispute any findings of discrimination by Julie Hughes? I can't read what's said there, so I have no idea what you're referring to. Okay. It looks like it thanks me for sending my concerns there. It said it treated this matter confidentiality, uh, very confidential. I don't know, did she review this investigation with you? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, so that's a no, I, I assume. I don't know what this investigation is. I cannot read the document you supplied. You cannot read it? No. All right. By any chance, do you have this letter on file for November 4th from Julie you sent to me? On file? Yeah. In yeah, we discovery. sent a copy of it in your discovery. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Is there any way I can get another copy of that? Because he can't read this copy. Is there any way I can get a, a, a clear copy of that? You mean for me to email it to you? Yes, please. It's dated November 4th of 2019. 
Okay. That will be greatly appreciated. And can you review what the tuition reimbursement program is? Tuition reimbursements where employees are provided reimbursement for tuition they pay for after they complete the course and turn in the proper paperwork. Okay. What type, what's the proper paperwork? Uh, it's a tuition reimbursement form. They also have to supply uh, receipts of the payment and also, uh, I believe, uh, 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 fee schedule and also the uh, grades that show they passed the course. Thank you. I believe this is going to conclude for now. I do reserve the right to reconvene and for further questions, but I think we're good for now. Um, Mr. French, did you have any? I have no questions. questions? No. Okay. All right. I'm going to take the orders for the transcripts before we go off, um, Mr. Uh, Oyekwe, did you want to order the original transcript? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then, Mr. French, you're ordering a copy? Yes. Okay. So I have an original transcript going to Mr. Oyekwe, and then a copy of the transcript going to Mr. French. And will that include the um, condensed version as well, like with the four pages on one? Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, I can find out for you, but okay. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, Sometimes we get like the, the real version, which is a page of testimony a page, and then sometimes we'll have the condensed where it's four pages on one. Oh, I see what you're saying. I can find out for you. Okay. Okay. Mr. French, did you want to order the video? Yes. Okay. And that concludes our video tape deposition. We are going off record at 12.59 p.m.